All right, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. My call sign is Blitz, and if you're new here, thanks for stopping in to spend some of your finite, precious time with me because time is time. Spend it wisely because you don't get it back, right? So, that being said, what are we doing today? Well, we're, we're preparing for a little bit of permanent stealth camping, right? Because nobody likes camping in regular campsites or even the primitive sites and being around people the whole point of going on the woods is to get away from every single buddy so in this video i'm going to show you how first i recon and hunt and search for an appropriate shelter site and the process that goes into that this is actually the third the third day out that i've been on two days in a row and then a day about a month ago but we're gonna go through this whole process. I'm gonna show you how to get it done, how to find the perfect shelter site in the perfect area. And then after that, in upcoming videos, we are going to focus on actually building something out here. Now, when I say something, I don't mean something as kind of like extensive and more long-term as the uh, shelter I built up in Tennessee. But, uh, you know, we're talking, you know, it's Florida, deep south, so jungle hut and, um, you know, basic frame and a roof and then area to hang the hammocks inside and maybe a floor as time goes on. But that being said, I'm super excited. I finally found what seems like a good location that's gonna be close to the water, but um, not in a flood zone. Super important <laughs> for building, obviously. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Like I believe I said, this is my third trip out to this general vicinity. So let's go ahead and rewind real quick and we'll start with the first trip and what I thought I was going to figure out with that trip. And then the second trip, which just happened yesterday, which was a bit of a fail, but then a bit of a success. And then we'll go ahead and catch up to today. So this is the recon. This is that work that you gotta put in. And it's the most important work, I would say, um, to uh, to getting a shelter built. Because if you pick the wrong location or you pick a spot that doesn't have enough resources or low water supplies or stuff like that, or God forbid your site gets discovered, then, yeah, it kind of SOL. So, let's go ahead and jump into it and let the recon begin. What are some criteria that you can think of for a good shelter site? Hit me up down there in the comments and let me know. I already have a list in my brain, but I'd like to hear how you evaluate that. So, that being said, let's keep exploring. So, a few criteria that I like to keep in mind when I'm looking for a shelter build site. Number one, obviously I need a lot of straight trees in the area or at least a general vicinity that I can harvest for the shelter. I also need good, good elevation so I don't get flooded out, right? Especially if I'm near a water source like this big creek behind me. I also would like to have concealment so my site does not get discovered by accident, right? So concealment, elevation to prevent flooding. I need good resources in the area that, you know, means water, trees, preferably straight ones <laughs> and uh, what else what else in terms of oh yeah of course I want to have I want to have a location that is within reasonable distance of my house and I also want a location that it doesn't take me five hours to get to on foot but it's still remote so those are a few considerations that I take into account and looking around where we're at right now I'm seeing seeing this 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 might be the spot Got to poke around a little bit more though. This is actually an ant carrying something. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it sure is. That's how strong an ant is, guys. Look at that. Pretty cool, huh? A few other criteria to mention is uh, when I'm looking for a shelter site, I don't want to have to be concerned with clearing. I don't want to clear out a ton of stuff. So I want an area that is decently open, but you'll notice that it's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of deceptive. It's open, but 
it's kind of closed in by all of these saw palmettos that are behind me. So it's just kind of like this open space with a bunch of like natural walls around it for lack of a better term because you will hear anything coming through palmettos for sure um so that's kind of nice you know and then also another good thing about having an area that's nice and open like this is the fact that there's not gonna be a ton of bugs in here eating you alive and for this location right here the water is only about 500 meters that way Yes, sir, that is a big bag. Packs out quite nicely. And of course, you gotta consider, I'm only out here for a few days, but I have all my camera gear in here. And an ax, large saw, nails, and a bunch of other things related to building that I wouldn't typically carry with me. All right, yeah, on the trail, this is how we do it. Come in on a main developed trail and then bust out and make our own. This way in is about um, four and a half miles total. Um, but man, terrain is a little challenging and it's bloody hot. And we got the big pack. We got the big boy pack, like, packed out all the way. And I don't know about you, but I really do like packs that um, stack and, you know, top loaders versus ones that go wide. Just feels like you're carrying a giant pregnant cat on your back versus this, which, you know, there's a lot of gear there to be sure, but um, it, it, it's easier to carry like this, in my opinion, and more stable. So anyways, here we go. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna keep at it. Check in once we uh, once we get to the uh, the next waypoint where we will then proceed to strike north, making our own trail down to the river. at least at the second waypoint. We're down here by the creek. This part is pretty wide. So I believe in order to find the site from last year, got to move about a half a mile up and uh, probably find it further up near where the, uh, where this really starts flowing into a large creek. Floating wood is pretty sweet on this bag. I'm a big fan. I don't really know what floating meant. Floating lid meant until I got the said floating lid. See how that just slides right off on a clip. And there we go. Of course I have food, but <laughs> of course I also have some beer. No grief. What kind of survivalist would I be without my number one favorite brand of beer. That's good stuff right there, boys. You see how wide this is? This is ridiculous. Like, I can't see in that. Like, I don't mind swimming it. I can swim, no problem. But I can't see in it. And the reason why is all the rotting leaves fall in the water and release tannic acid there by turning it this brown color. I can't see in. I don't know if there's gators in there. I don't know what the hell's in there. Uh, I know there's definitely water moccasins in there. So that being said, and I also want to cross the creek to explore the other side, moving back up near where this actually starts off and um, 
begins, right? I guess, what is that called with the start of a creek? I have no idea. Like I'm a little, little heat stroked right now, but wherever that is back up there, the crossing was real shallow and it was real narrow and we were able to go across real easily. And the idea is to camp on this side, cross in the morning or today, and then be able to explore that other side. And that's where the shelter site is actually going to go. All right, so there it is. I decided to just stop and take a break, like for the night. Like I've been out for about five, six hours now. Um, hiked four, five. I, I lost track. I mean, like I stopped using my watch about five miles in because I because I wanted to save the battery. Um, burned God knows fifteen hundred, two thousand calories in the process. Um, so you know, I just like it's five o'clock. Time to chill, take a break, then wake up in the morning and. Uh, Come up with a plan of attack from there. It is morning, day two, and I slept like a baby. I'm super well hydrated. Had to get up probably three or four times during the night to go to the bathroom, which was a really good sign. Um, and once the party stopped out here and things quieted down, because if you're familiar with spending the night out in the woods, usually the first couple hours after um, the sunset is pretty loud with all the birds and crickets and animals going crazy. Um, but then after that, things quiet down. And so, yeah, I got a good solid eight hours of sleep so the game plan now like i mentioned i got my partner coming in today he doesn't know where i'm at he's convinced that he knows he doesn't know he's like oh you should just stay there and i'll find you and that was the last text message i got from him before my phone died and i can't text back anyways so um yeah i'd love to just sit here in my butt all day and wait for them to find me that's not going to happen because i'm like three miles north of where he even remotely thinks that i am so i'm going to have to go ahead and pack this up and um hike back to the trail and then get on the other section of trail and get back really i really just need to get back to the trailhead that's really what i need to do that's where i'll be able to uh you know get to my car charge on my phone call him tell him about the change of plans because after looking at maps and being more on the ground in this area i've come up with a better plan and probably what's going to be a better location to build that uh that shelter so that being said, clock's ticking. I got um, I got a little bit of time to get a cup of coffee and um, clean up around the campsite a little bit, eat some chow, and pack it up and get the heck out of here. So I will check back in a little bit later. Uh, let's say check back in once I 
get back to the uh, to the trailhead. Yeah, sounds like a good plan. Because the rest of that time, it's just gonna be slog. That's it. It's gonna be slogging through swamp, more swamp, and more swamp. And then once we get back to the trailhead, it's just gonna be um, painful and hot and humid. So that's what the future looks like for now. But hey, listen, no struggle, no gains. Let's go.
Uh, look at that, boys. Is this the world's oldest jar of pickles? Dare I open it? Oh, that thing is rusted shut. Ooh, God, that's disgusting. I hate pickles anyways, but my God, I really hate it more. A lot more now that I see this. Nasty. The whole goal here is to get as close to water on solid ground and elevation as you can. That's really what I'm shooting for here. So things are starting to look up, literally. Terrain change, elevation change, and uh, no more swampy ground, so that's good. But we are too far from the water in my opinion. Half a mile is too far, um, especially if you're having to go load up all the time. I mean, it's doable, sure but I'd like to avoid it as much as possible. So we're gonna kinda try to explore around this area a little bit, but there's also a uh, small creek that feeds into that bigger one that you just saw. And I'd kinda like to get over there. So the hunt continues. Ooh, there we go, look at that view, guys. And these massive monster spiders like to build their webs right in the middle of the trail. I guess they're going to catch something big. And the journey continues. And you definitely don't want one of those on your face. That's all I know. This looks like an old horse trail, but obviously not in use for some period of time. That's exactly why I love it. I feel like we're getting closer and closer to like the perfect shelter site. I just, now I have the terrain, I have the elevation, and I have everything I want in the area. One problem, don't have any water. But look at that. Beautiful open space is not going to require a lot of clearing. You go back there behind those saw palmettos, set up lots of straight trees. All that looks great. All right, there you go. That's how you find a good viable shelter site. And uh, it only took three days, spread out over the course of a month. And uh, I mean, I could dev I didn't. Even, I haven't even covered that much space out here yet. I've been out here for about four hours, hiked maybe about six miles. I still haven't covered much of this space, but I've covered this primary area really well. So I feel really good about that shelter site. Talk to me down there in those comments when you guys are headed out to set up a secret shelter site. What are the considerations that you keep in mind? Maybe you like to have a cell phone signal while you're out there. <laughs> Is that important? Checking your updates, checking your notifications. Um, technology can definitely be a good tool, you know. You see me using all trails out here. Yeah, I got my map and compass and I can run analog all day long. But I'm on a time crunch. I literally have five hours to recon the space and really nail down a good shelter site. So I figured, hey, I'll try out the technology, right? See what kind of advantage I can get. And with all trails, man, not only does it map everywhere I'm going, it uh, calculates and knows like the elevation and the distance, my heart rate. I guess it's reading that off my Apple Watch. So yeah, pretty sweet. And then guys, there's one final consideration that you want to take if you're going to play in a wildlife management area, and that is, drum roll, hunting season and hunters. That's something I had not kept track of for this area. I was actually on the other side of this, this state forest where there was no hunting, so when I switched to the other side, I forgot to check hunting season. I knew bow season was starting soon, but I forgot to check. So. I get out there, be bopping along with all my gear, ready to start building my shelter, and I hear, psst, hey you. And I'm like, no, no, who else could possibly be out here? Oh, it's just a hunter up in a tree stand. That's all. 
It took me like 10 seconds to even locate him. He was so well camouflaged. So needless to say, we had a little conversation. Apparently, him and his brother had been out there for three days, and the area where I wanted to build my shelter is literally right in the space where his brother runs deer through for him to shoot. So, needless to say, I said, all right, see you later, bye, pulled out, went back maybe about two, three miles north of that location, went back in the woods again, and within a quarter mile, it immediately ran into a tree stand and signs of hunters. So, I said, okay, can't do that. Let's give this one more try. So, get back to the truck, look at my map, and I locate a spot that looked like it might work away from clearings, away from open spaces, away from maybe tree stands. And so I went to check it out, spent a couple hours out there and it looked really good. No signs of hunters, no tree stands, great water supply in the area and some old history, like an old broken down bridge, which was pretty cool. Who knows how long that's been there. And according to one of my partners in survival, who you see sometimes show up on these videos, he's thinking there's other artifacts in the area. So this could be a really cool spot, not only to build a bushcraft shelter, but also maybe to do a little uh, metal detecting. So who knows until I actually go and spend the night out there. So that's the next move. I'm gonna spend the night, see what things look like, and I'm also gonna leave one of my wireless cams. Now this is really cool. It's not like your traditional trail cam where you have to come get the footage after it's been recorded. With this, it runs off of cellular data connection. And in this area, there is a cell connection. So I can check this live stream anywhere at any time on my phone, or I can just go pull the data as well. So those two things might be something you want to keep in mind as you're going through that checklist. Dropping a cam in the area just for some observation, just to see what's going on. Not a bad idea. And then before you start building, obviously, go out there, spend a night, maybe spend a, two nights, and really see if you like that area. So, with that being said, guys, I gotta run. I appreciate you watching. Please leave a comment down below with any uh, suggestions, ideas, tips, tricks that you have when you go out self-camping, and I will see you next time, and hopefully on Gab and Rumble, because maybe, maybe you're getting tired of supporting YouTube and stuff like that. I put all the same content up on Rumble, and I have a ton of content out there on Gab as well. So go check out those two links down there in the pinned post, and I will see you next time. Thanks for the support. Hey, you still there? Cool, then don't forget to check out our website located on the interwebs at thesurvivaloutpost.com. We are designed and optimized for hard use, for the self-reliant who talk less and hustle more. Thanks to our international connections, you get first access to unique and innovative products from around the world. This is the gear that will give you that edge you need in a survival situation or if you're just trying to keep the lights on when the power goes out. Any content mentioned in this video is linked up down there in the pinned post and be sure to watch the suggested videos for more real-world survival training and knowledge.